Hey guys, welcome back to Team Deathslinger. My name is Peter, and today we're going to be looking at the Anubismon Gizmon loop that I talked about last week in my BT16 server spawn video. So, this deck is very much glass cannon. There is no protection on it, but the idea is to OTK your opponent, um, kind of just with one stack and a rookie on board. So, starting with the in trainings, we have BT5 Gijimon. I like this egg for the DP boost because sometimes we do need to swing with our stack. Uh, in fact, if we don't get a Nubismon and we wind up with Chaos Gallimon, we will need the DP boost to swing over uh, most level sixes safely. So I like to stick with my DP boosting egg. I go two copies of BT13 Falcomon. The on play giving retaliation to something in combination with the Cerberus Mon that'll give a level three rush after you play it can be really, really strong. Um, we don't really have a lot of removal so this is a really good way for us to swing over a suspended body on the opponent's board that might be blocking us from um, kind of executing our combo. So I like to run this as a two of because it's a really nice uh, like tech piece for you to play with. Then we have four copies of Proto Gizmon. Uh, it's just you can pop an egg, play it for one on play, draw one trash one. It can't digivolve, and it allows us to loop Gizmons by bottom decking two Gizmons. You play out the next level of Gizmon. So all of these Gizmons are going to have the same effect. So this is a level three one. We run it at four because we want to see it. Four copies of BT5 Gilmon. You could also look at this as a preference-based slot. I like this because our Cerberus Mon Inheritable will allow us to delete a Digimon to swing or to unsuspend. And so this will give us a memory for doing that. And it, it kind of allows us to extend our plays a little bit. So I could totally see you going down to like two on this and then running like two of the Rush Gilmon because we do build up trash pretty quickly. So that's also totally viable. Uh, but this is just the way I've been testing it. For Gizmon's ATs, uh, you can pop your level 4 to play this for a uh, reduced cost of 2, draw 2, trash 2, can't digivolve, same deal. Uh, this pairs really nicely with the Gilmon because you're effectively popping this to play the Gizmon AT. Uh, it reduces by 4 and then you gain 1 memory back, so you're paying 1 to hard play a Gizmon AT, which feels really nice. Then we go 4 copies of BT5 Black Raumon. This is one of the pieces I talked about needing for your OTK loop for the new Cerberus Mon support. It's just when one of your other Digimon is deleted, you gain security plus one, which we're going to delete our Digimon a lot. So this is really good, and it's kind of essential for us to, ha uh, <coughs> to have. Then we go one copy of BT7 Lauimon. This is just to hybrid per game, because we are Glass Cannon. It is possible that we will die before we execute our full loop, so we want to have something in our pocket to uh, close out the game with. Then two copies of EX3 Graumon. We don't like this as much as BT5 because the Inheritable is a when attacking trigger, and it can sometimes be harder to execute with this, and it doesn't like Digivolving on not Gilmon, so if you brick with a Falcomon and you don't have the Gilmon to Digivolve this onto, it gets more expensive, but uh, we need more consistency, so I run it at two, just to ensure that we have a way to get security plus one. Four copies of Gizmon XT. Uh, this is just the top end loop of the Gizmon. It has Blocker, which does come in handy. Um, we don't care about playing Akihiro, don't care that it can't digivolve, just on deletion we're going to play a proto Gizmon. So this is also uh, essential for our loop. Then we get to four copies of the BT-16 Cerberus Mon. This will, on play and when digivolving, return a Dark Animal or Shaman. So we actually don't have to worry about discarding our Cerberus X because we can just bring it back with the Cerberus Mon. And this has the Inheritable when an effect plays a Digimon, one of your Digimon gains Rush. So essential for our combo. Then we go Cerberus X on top to activate the on play of... Uh, our own Digimon, we need to have Cerberus Mon underneath so we can play a level 3, we can give it Rush, we get to draw one trash one, um, and then the Inheritable lets us delete another Digimon to unsuspend this Digimon. So this is uh, kind of the important part, to me at least, because um, Anubis Mon will let us play out a level 3 anyway, so just being able to swing unsuspend is very, very helpful. Then, in this version of this deck, I run four copies of Anubis Mon. The one Digivolving will play us a body, and then all of our Digimon played from the trash game Rush. So this is just the natural um, top end for this deck. You're going to get a body off of this, and then you're going to give it Rush. Or you can wait, but it makes more sense to give it Rush right off the bat. And then you play Anubis Mon, you get a second Rush body, and now you have two outlets for you to Gizmon loop with. Um, sometimes it gets a little awkward because you swing with Gizmon, it doesn't die, and you can't loop effectively. So that's when you swing, you use the one attacking to pop your Gizmon. Um, Unsuspend, you'll do two checks, um, and then you'll be able to continue your loop. So this is a really great top end for that. And then after you, you could potentially swing four checks with this, 
and you swing once with the rookie, and because you played another rookie with Rush, you can just swing out with that second rookie, so that's an EC6 checks right there, and then you have the Lowy Mon if you need it. So that doesn't even require you to have a full setup in the trash. That's literally just two Gizmons in trash, Anubismon, and you're good. You can potentially swing out for game. So that's really strong in its own right. Um, I like Chaos Gallimon as my secondary boss monster. The It doesn't quite work as well as Anubismon. It is more expensive to Digivolve. It doesn't play you anything with Rush. However, when one of your Digimon is deleted, you can play out another level 3 once per turn. So this is giving us uh, effectively a second rookie. And there's a way to finesse this where you don't give the first rookie you play Rush with this uh, so that you can Digivolve and like pop a body and then you give the second rookie Rush and then you can get your checks one way or another. Um, two copies of Demonic Disaster just because um, if it's not safe to swim with your rookie or... You want to, you, they have some recovery shenanigans going on, and you need to swing a certain number of checks where the math just doesn't work out. You can demonic disaster to get an extra two checks with whatever boss body you have. Um, then we can go four copies of wisdom training, just making our top end cheaper to go into. That's really, really important with Chaos Gallimon because he costs four, and you really don't want to pay four to digivolve into something that won't do anything after you digivolve for four. Um, two copies of Alice. This is more for the Chaos Gallimon. Um, it's also really helpful for Anubismon because if you uh, delete another level 3 to go into your Mega for 0, you will trigger the Black Gralmon, security plus 1. So now you're going into your stack already ready to check, uh, swing for 2 checks at 14k or 13k with Anubismon. Oh, Anubis is 10, so for 12, 12k. It's even more important for the DP boosting egg now. Um, two copies of Matt Ichida just because we discard a lot of cards with Gizmon. Um, we can get our memory back and make sure we stay at three, which is really helpful. And then I only run two copies of Analog Youth just because there are a lot of non-Digimon cards in this deck, and it does feel bad to mill them away, but at the same time, getting cards in trash is very important for this deck. So that is my deck profile for this deck. I'm sure there are more efficient ways to play it. This is just, uh, to me, this is the most fun way to play it because uh, I really love this card. I really love BT5 Yielmon. They are two of my favorite cards ever printed. Uh, I think they suck most of the time. So having a way to play them together like this is just fantastic. So let me know what you guys think. Let me know if you have a better way to play this that I could try. Um, go ahead and give it a whirl. Keep in mind that it is a pretty glass cannony. You are susceptible to removal. You are susceptible to being swung over. So you kind of need to pick your moment, promote, and just go for it. So uh, tons of fun. Make sure if you enjoyed this video to like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, let me know what you thought, and uh, I'll catch you in the next video. Have a great day, and thanks for watching.